Nova Southeastern University, the 37th Annual Law Center Commencement Exercises. Greetings, the trustees, president and faculty of Nova Southeastern University, bid you welcome to this joyous celebration for the conferral of degrees upon those whom the university honors for learning and diligence and upon those whom the university charges to, to turn scholarships into service. Will the audience please rise and join the faculty and graduates in singing the Star Spangled Banner. sit down. At this time, it is my honor and privilege to introduce you to Dr. Frank DiPiano, University Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. DiPiano. Thank you, Dr. Flores. We welcome all of you who have joined us to honor the members of the Class of 2013. Several distinguished groups are seated on the platform today with the faculty. At this time, I'd like to recognize the members of Nova Southeastern University's Board of Trustees who are with us today. Trustee Mitchell Berger, please stand as I call your name. <laughs> Trustee Sylvia Flores, today's Grand Marshal. And Trustee Melanie May. Will members of the Law Center's Board of Governors also please rise and be recognized as I call your names? Judge Robert Diaz, <laughs> Paul Fenizio, <laughs> Michael Greenberg, <laughs> and Beverly Vassell. <laughs> I'd like also to introduce Ms. Jacqueline Travisano. Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for Nova Southeastern. <laughs> Assisting us today for the hearing impaired is Ms. Lisa Hendrickson and Ms. Heather Labruto from Nationwide Interpreter Resource, Inc. Thank you. <laughs> A university becomes great not because of buildings or athletic accomplishments, but because it develops an outstanding student body through guidance of their faculty. Sitting on the stage behind me today are distinguished members of our faculty. To receive the deserved recognition of the graduates you have educated and inspired, as well as to receive the thanks from their families and friends, I'd like you all to stand and be recognized now. Would the faculty please stand? Thank you. 
And now to formally open these commencement exercises, I'm privileged to introduce Dr. George L. Hanbury II, President and Chief Executive Officer of Nova Southeastern University. Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. DiPiano and members of the Board of Trustees, our guest speaker, Mr. Eugene Pettis, the incoming president of the Florida Bar, Mr. Pettis will have the sole distinction of becoming the first African American in the Bar's history to serve in this position. As president, he will lead the country's second largest Bar at a time when its membership will exceed 95,000 lawyers. Let's hear it for Mr. Pettis. It's also my distinct pleasure as Nova Southeastern University's sixth president to welcome all of the family, members, as well as friends, loved ones, associates, significant others, to publicly witness and to celebrate the graduates today and in recognition of the hard work that they've taken and undertaken in their academic success. Today is about you, but I want to take just a few moments, as Dr. DiPiano did, to recognize and to commend the faculty, because it was the law faculty who challenged you and hopefully inspired you and taught you to prepare to meet the future with great hope and anticipation and to pass the bar. Many of you probably have a favorite professor or two, and one of them will speak this morning, this afternoon. But it's a collective shared knowledge that you have amassed from all of your NSU law professors that will guide you forward. Please join me in again recognizing the distinguished faculty with us here today. I'm sure you've heard this before, but commencement is both a beginning and an end. As you enter or progress into your chosen field, I hope you will think back on the relationships you've created at NSU and the friends and the family and the faculty and the staff who've been your greatest cheerleaders and inspired you to reach for greatness. At this time, I would like for the graduates to recognize the families so that you can honor them as they've supported you during these trying years. As the 2012-2013 school year comes to an end, we can take a moment to reflect back upon your time here at NSU. I said previously that commencement is indeed an ending and a beginning. You're ending your time as a law student, yet you're embarking on a brand new beginning. Today, there are 250 of you who will receive the JD degree. This morning, I had 900 undergraduates that were just as excited as you are in receiving their undergraduate degree. In fact, during this commencement period in the next six commencements that I'll undertake, Nova Southeastern University will award 7,500 degrees in various aspects of undergraduate, graduate, and professionals such as you all celebrating the hard work in which they've undertaken. All of you, including the 7,500, are from all over the world, from states throughout this nation, from New Jersey and New York, from Texas and California, from as far away as Angola, and Brazil, and Colombia, 
Egypt, Jamaica, Vietnam, Russia, Ghana, India, Italy, Spain, and Davy. <laughs> Our graduates also include active military deployed in Europe and the Pacific in countries ranging, ranging from Angola to Zambia. In fact, this year's graduating class hail from 77 different countries and 48 states. While you were here, some of you chose to study abroad, perhaps in Italy or Spain, or earning an LLM degree in either international human rights and environmental law, or Central European and Czech law and business. Many of you chose to focus on a specific area of law while studying at NSU, participating in our hands-on clinical practices, including the alternative dispute resolution, children and families, criminal justice, environmental and land use law, international practice, and our personal injury litigation clinic. And you are all very eager, as we are, to begin serving in South Florida's veteran community with the opening and appointment of our first staff attorney in our new Veterans Law Clinic. Of course, many of you came to NSU straight from your undergraduate program just like those that I had this morning at 11 o'clock. Others took a year off for travel or to gain some work experiences or transferred from another law school. And still others came back after many years in order to accomplish their academic goals, dreams, and aspirations. This year's graduating class of Nova Southeastern University, that 7,500 I mentioned, has the youngest graduate at 19 years old. Our oldest graduate, guess what? 81 years young. Now, I'm not gonna mention the oldest graduate in this class, but it's a little younger than 81. Regardless of your age, I am sure that you all made new friends. You downed more than the FDA recommended allowance of Red Bull. I hear that does give you wings. And you made memories that you'll treasure for your entire life. You all stand out in your unique ways to make up this incomparable class of graduates, NSU's law class of 2013. Since you've been here for several years now, you have no doubt realized that the community is one of our eight core values. And you've embodied and will continue to embrace that, I hope, as you depart. NSU is proud to be recognized by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching as one of only 37 universities nationwide out of more than 4,000 colleges and universities that have the dual designation of high research as well as community engaged. In addition, we were just named the 2013 President's Highest Education Community Service Honor Roll. It's the highest honor a college or university can receive for its commitment to volunteering, service learning, and civic engagement, and a distinction of which we're very proud. This did not just happen, but it was because of a lot of your participation. Let's recognize that with a round of applause to our graduates and our faculty.
To give you some idea, NSU students logged an incredible 10,214 hours of service as individuals as well as through clubs and organizations this academic year. This produces a real economic and social impact and does good in our community. 95 members of this law class qualified for recognition by performing at least 50 hours of pro bono service. In total, NSU law students volunteered 23,688 hours of pro bono legal work, which is equivalent to over 473 work weeks or almost nine and a half years. Unbelievable, isn't it? In addition, 18 of y'all received summer and our academic year fellowships for a total of 3,300 volunteer hours. You've done remarkable. So community has been indeed one of your core values as it is the universities. With more than 152,000 alumni, you will find sharks all over Florida and the rest of the world. You'll find judges, you'll find associates with an NSU degree. And as an NSU alumni, you are indeed entering good company. Just as your predecessors have, and we've stood on their shoulders, we now stand on your shoulders to see Vision 2020 come to reality. You are the embodiment of NSU spirit, and together we are one NSU. By focusing on your goals with enthusiasm and the progressive realization of that worthy goal, you will be successful. As the reputation of this university spreads because of your accomplishments, and those that will follow you. Previously, I mentioned community as one of NSU's core values. I would like to finish my comments on one other core value of the eight core values. And I hope you will remember this core value and practice it throughout the rest of your life. Integrity. I challenge you to live up to the admonitions that Shakespeare gave to Polonius in his words of advice to Laertes. This above all, to thine own self be true. As the night, the day, thou canst not be false to any man. You see, integrity, like a mirror, once shattered, is difficult or impossible to restore. I'm not going to sugarcoat life for you as your president telling you you'll see nothing but bright days in the future. Life will not be easy and you will be tested. Your integrity will be tested. Life is indeed hard, but if you work hard and you pursue your dreams, and lead an honest and ethical life with integrity, those are the lawyers that will be most successful and remembered. So I end with these comments to the graduates. Keep your aim above your reach. Be bold and be persistent in achieving your aim. But most of all, maintain your integrity. It is your most precious asset. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. President Hanbury, members of the stage party, faculty, family and friends of our graduates, and most important of all, 
graduates of the May class of 2013. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the law school, I also want to welcome you to this commencement ceremony and extend our sincere congratulations to the graduates and their families. Now, the one thing about following a president is you don't know exactly what he's gonna say. And sometimes I think he has read my script, so I am going to try to slip over a few things, but I do want to talk a little bit about you. The class of 2013, 260 graduates strong. You are a class with a number of accomplishments. Most notable is your fellow classmate, Brooke Lotta, who is the student recipient of the 2013 University Student Engagement and Achievement Award, better known as the STUI. The Law Review this year added to its regular publications a symposium issue on the important topic of post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans and active duty military personnel. Many members of your class distinguished themselves in the intercollegiate moot court and trial advocacy competitions, including a trial advocacy team win over Harvard Law School. As will be noted shortly, your class demonstrated stellar commitment to pro bono service. During your orientation three or four years ago, you were presented with a gavel. You were told at that time that the gavel is a symbol of our profession used by judges to signal the opening of a session of court for maintaining order, for punctuating decisions, and bringing matters to a close. At the conclusion of today's ceremony, you will receive a sounding block there is much symbolism in these two items. They represent the beginning and the end of your formal legal education. They represent a milestone in your life's journey to become a member of this noble and distinguished helping profession. Stanley I. Greenspan and Nancy Thorndike, psychiatrists, wrote, and I paraphrase, as you progress from one milestone to the next, remember that you don't really leave any of them behind. In order to grow and develop to your full potential, you must continually build on and strengthen all of the steps that have gone before. Your legal education and what you take away from it will be tested, strengthened, and augmented as you move on to establish future milestones, particularly within the legal profession. Legal knowledge gained in law school will be augmented by new situations and your ability for self-learning and for creative reasoning. Ethical challenges, once debated in the classrooms and hallways, will confront you in a variety of settings testing your moral character. Professionalism and civility take center stage in a profession where courtesy, respect, honesty, integrity, and adherence to decorum and rules are central tenets. Service and leadership to the profession, to individuals and to the community are no longer just clever words of a mission statement. September 2014, the Law Center will celebrate its 40th anniversary. For 40 years, we have educated students and prepared them for the important vocation of helping individuals and organizations resolve legal problems. I've had the pleasure of talking with many of our graduates from the Law Center to a person they have come to value the education received at NOVA. I say that they have come to value the education because oftentimes it takes time and circumstances
before a person comes to fully appreciate the efforts of faculty and others who have had a hand in their learning. When graduates take the bar or handle their first case, they begin to reflect back appreciatively on the faculty members and staff who have taught them and provided them assistance in their education. So, while the gavel and the sounding block symbolize the beginning and end of your formal legal education, today they become symbols of the beginning of your professional career. As I close my formal remarks, I ask each of you the following question, and I paraphrase President John F. Kennedy. Will you be a person of courage, a person of judgment and wisdom, a person of integrity, and a person of dedication? Every successful NSU law alumni has demonstrated the characteristics of courage, judgment, wisdom, integrity, and dedication in his or her life. Now I would like to take a few minutes to recognize some of the accomplishments of individual members of your class. In your commencement program, there is a list of activities and honors in which students have been active in both the Law Center and the local community. Each of these activities and interests has brought tremendous benefit to the school and the community. However, I do want to draw special attention to several awards. I am very pleased to announce the recipient of the Professor Larry Kalovich Award. For more than 20 years, our distinguished colleague, Larry Kalovich, placed his indelible imprint on NSU law and on the thousands of students he taught. In his memory has been created an award that recognizes the student in the graduating class who has demonstrated the most promise in business or bankruptcy law. This year's recipient is John Moore. Throughout his life, Associate Dean and Professor Paul R. Joseph was a committed and articulate proponent of social justice. In his years as a member of the Law Center faculty, Professor Joseph inspired untold numbers of students to follow in his footsteps and continue the battle to ensure that justice for all is not a hollow phrase. In his honor, a student in the graduating class is recognized annually for evidencing the greatest commitment to social justice. I am pleased to announce the recipient of this award is Philip Jones. The Honorable Judge Charles I. Kaplan was an alumnus of the law school, served as an adjunct professor, and was a member of the Alumni Association Board. Judge Kaplan was a judge in the juvenile court system and was very interested in helping youth. The Honorable Charles I. Kaplan Endowment and Award was created through the efforts of his parents, Dr. Daniel and Mrs. Sylvia Kaplan, for a student who has demonstrated dedication and commitment to children and families through the students' work in the Law Center's Children and Families Clinic. The recipient of this year's award is Raymond Trandley. I established two recognition awards. These two awards, one for leadership and service to the law school, an internal focus, and one for leadership and service to the community, an external focus, are given to individuals who have demonstrated through their actions a commitment to the better of the law school and our community. It is with pleasure 
that I announce the recipient of the Dean's Award and recognition for leadership and service to the law school goes to Brooke Lada. And the Dean's Award and recognition for leadership and service to the community goes to Amanda Saba. The Glantz Law Professionalism Award is given to a December and May graduate of the Law Center who demonstrates through their performance in the professional responsibility course and through their conduct the highest standards of professionalism. The award was created by Ronald P. Glantz and Wendy Newman Glantz, 1980 and 1982 graduates of the Law Center. The May 2013 recipient of the Glass, Glantz Law Professional, Professionalism Award is Ryan Tyre. Now, as you look over the graduating class, um, take special note of those wearing gold lanyards about their neck. These are awarded in recognition for the many hours of volunteer work in the public interest. The organized bar represents, uh, respects, and promotes pro bono activities by lawyers, recognizing such efforts as among the highest ideas of the legal profession. And we would like to honor those graduates who have already demonstrated those ideas. As the president has indicated, this year's class served 23,688 pro bono hours. It is the highest number of, of uh, hours by a graduating class of the Law Center. It is the equivalent of 473 50-hour work weeks or nearly nine and a half years of service to the public at 50, hours, 50 weeks per year. If we were to use a modest billing rate of $150, $150 per hour, this pro bono service saved clients over $3,500,000 of legal fees. Will the graduates who have received the pro bono award please rise and accept the appreciation of us all? In keeping with our university and law school traditions of active student involvement, we ask your class to elect a student to speak for, you, for all of you at your graduation. I am pleased at this time to present your student speaker, Andrew Sando. Since graduating high school, Andrew's goal was to earn a law degree. At the age of 17, he interned at the Monroe County District Attorney's Office in his hometown of Rochester, New York. He went on to obtain a bachelor's degree from the University of Rochester. After meeting his wife at the same university, he delayed law school and moved to Manhattan, Kansas to work as his wife pursued a veterinarian degree at Kansas State University. During her schooling, he worked at the Potawatomi County Attorney's Office and later became a felony probation officer. After his wife finished her degree, they moved to Florida where he successfully completed NOVA's ample program and fulfilled his dream of earning a degree in law. During his time at NOVA, he has excelled both academically, graduating cum laude, and in an extra and in extra curricular activities. He became a class representative and the election chairman for the student government, the president of the Criminal Law Society, and has perfected his talents in the courtroom. He was presented with the highest grade award for the Law Center's Advanced Trial Advocacy course. He was a recipient of the 2012 Sheldon J. Schlesinger Trial Advocacy Scholarship 
and he has competed on three of Nova's traveling competitive trial teams, one of which his team became quarterfinalists and another in which his team beat Harvard Law School to become finalists. With this, please welcome Mr. Andrew Sando. Hello, everyone. It, it is such an honor to be standing here today as the voice of our class for our commencement ceremony. With that said, I cannot remember the last time I've sat so still and been so well behaved. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to blow up these beach balls and get them out to you guys. As Dean Steele said, one of the greatest privileges I've ever had in my life is to be a competitor on Nova's various trial teams and travel across the country and represent Nova Law as we try mock cases. What I've always noticed is that after months of practicing, preparing, rehearsing, and knowing every angle of those cases, before each of those competitions began, my heart always beat like a phone book in a dryer. Litigation attorneys will always tell you, the day that you try a case and you don't feel that is the day you should stop trying cases. Now, I'd use the mic right now to let you hear my heartbeat, but we all know that my Raul Valero-like body wouldn't let you hear it anyway. <laughs> but you know what's interesting about that fast-beating heart is that it's something that every single person in this arena has felt before. Take a second and try and remember that feeling. Class of 2013, before we even knew each other, we all share that same fast-beating heart when we received that acceptance letter into Nova Law, or when we saw those two grades and successfully passed that rigorous ample program. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we all felt that same fast-beating heart on the very first day of law, sc law school and on those days where we didn't have all of our cases briefed. See, with Professor Rohr, you were allowed one day to say, today's not a good day. But that never seemed to work too well with Professor Burris. God, I don't think I could read that man's syllabus in a week. Nonetheless, we all share that same fast-beating heart when each and every one of us, for the first time, stood up as lawyers in the making and gave those painful LSV oral arguments. Yeah. We all felt that fast beating heart when we sat down for the first time. We rolled up those green earplugs and we took our first law school exam. We definitely know that fast beating heart when we type in our username and password into WebStar and check our grades. And maybe when we are actually suffering a actual heart attack from all the food at the UC. Now, granted, after our first year, we each began to go different ways, but we all still experienced that same fast-beating heart throughout our days at the Law Center. Whether it was making it to class on time after a long day of work, trying out for NTA or moot court, taking a final exam, doing a presentation, running for a position on an organization, or just dealing with that Florida bar, and here we are, three years later, after countless all-nighters, papers, exams, and it's all behind us. But I promise you, we will all share this same fast-beating heart many times in the future. And for you, that may be in your first interview. And for you, that may be in your first criminal or civil trial your first deposition, your first contract someone challenges, or your first property sold. When you stand back and look at the last three years, we began and lived this chapter in our lives, all feeling the same thing together. Together. Because no one here made it by themselves. 
We are all here with all of our accomplishments because at some point in time, we helped each other. That help came in the form of study groups and outlines. It came in the form of group papers and projects. It came in the form of classmates helping us with blue book citations and projects. And it came in the form of teachers, professors, friends, and student organizations. And at the very least, maybe most importantly, it came in the form of emotional support and friendship from everyone here today. No one sits here because of just themselves. We are here as one class, one class that shared the same beginning, one class that shared the same journey, one class now sharing the same end, and one class that shares that same fast beating heart together. So class, this speech gives me one chance to say something you'll never forget. One chance to have you always remember this moment in your life. So here it is. Promise each other that whenever you feel this fast beating heart, like a phone book in the dryer, remember your law school class here at Nova, 2013. Remember that it's what brought us together. It's what kept us together. And it's what will bring us together in the future. We all know a lifetime of studying the law couldn't teach you everything. So now we all enter this profession together. Our parents always say, no one has your back like family. Class of 2013, always take care of each other and guide each other. That's what makes us Nova Law. That's what makes us family with one heart. To the best chapter in my life, to the best friends I have ever known, and to the school that made it all happen. Cheers. Thank you, Andrew. I think your classmates did you well, selecting you to speak on their behalf. Your class also has chosen Professor Michael Flynn to speak today on behalf of the entire faculty. Michael Flynn joined the NSU Shepherd Broad Law Center faculty in 1987. His primary areas of academic interest are personal injury and consumer protection law as well as practical litigation skills training. He was employed by the Washington State Attorney General's Office in various positions, including corporate counsel for three community colleges, chief trial lawyer for the Washington State Human, Human Rights Commission, and as section chief for consumer protection enforcement in Eastern Washington. He also was in private practice as a litigator and personal injury trial lawyer. Professor Flynn earned his JD degree from Gonzaga University. He claims to be the number one Zags fan east of the Mississippi. He teaches civil procedure, consumer protection, medical malpractice, torts, and the personal injury clinic. He holds bar memberships in Washington State, Florida, and the Federal District and Circuit Courts of Appeal in the 9th and 11th Circuits. Professor Flynn has won numerous teaching awards at NSU and for continuing legal education and for his presentation to non-lawyers from national organizations such as the National Institute for Trial Advocacy. Please join me in welcoming Professor Flynn to the podium. So how cool is this? Huh? I'm standing here and I'm thinking what we should be doing is probably warming up to play hockey. But that's not why we're here. First of all, let me tell you that it's a, a great privilege and a, a real honor for, to stand here and 
and speak to you, the graduates of 2013. Um, when I was told that I had won, the first thing that happened is all of these people said they wanted a recount. <laughs> and the second thing that happened was uh, both of my daughters said, how could anyone vote for you? <laughs> so then I had to figure out something to say. And that's always not hard if you've had me in class. Um, so I asked uh, all of the people in my family and they, their answers were really terrible. And I, I can't do this. They're videotaping and some of the things they wanted me to do, it just wouldn't be right. So then I asked somebody, uh, there's a guy who works here at this uh, arena who's seen more graduations and been through more of this than all of us, whose name is Kirby Sides. And he's a long-haired guy who's been setting up and running security or doing security stuff here. So I asked him, what's the best I could do to, when I would stand up here and do this? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know, why don't you mime it? And I went, he's more jaded than even the people in my family. So I'm stuck. So I was left to my own devices. And of course, when I'm left to my own devices, I listen to music, so I turned on Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah, that ought to tell you where my head's at, right? So I'm listening to David Gilmour's song, and the song that I was attracted to was the song called On the Turning Away. And Gilmour talks about how people are turning away from other people. People are turning away from the problems and issues that are presented because they just can't be bothered. And he laments that people do that. And at the end of the song in his lyric, he looks and says, stop turning away. Stop turning away from what people need you to do and what you can do for other people. So I was thinking about that in terms of what this gathering is. And we're in an arena here filled with people who have never turned away. They have never turned away. Think about it. Every single one of these people in the stands here, whether it be your parents, your siblings, your grandparents, step-parents, whoever it may be, they have always never turned away from you. They have turned towards you. They are the reason you're here. They did law school just like you. And that's, that's what this is about. It's about not turning away, but turning towards. Then I look at you guys, and I think about it, and I said, well, first of all, for a law student to be successful, the first thing you have to do is you have to turn inward. And you have to find the courage and the strength to go through this struggle, because you got to deal with weird and wacky people like me. So you turn inward first, and then what do you do? You realize that all that you've struggled through in law school is to then turn towards someone else, to never turn away from people, to turn towards other people and make their lives a little bit better, one person at a time. And then I look at us as the faculty. What do we do? We've never turned away from you, and we will never turn away from you. You are our students. We have been your partners. It has been our privilege to be both of those things. We have tried and hope to serve you well to instill in you the idea that you never turn away. You turn towards those abused, neglected, and abandoned children. You turn towards the homeless, the, the veterans, the people who have been saddled with physical and mental and emotional disabilities. You turn towards every innocent, accused person who is in jail. You turn towards every business person or individual who's been victimized by the heartless greed and deception of those people with power and control. 
you turn towards every single person, regardless of their race, their age, their sexual preference, their handicap. You turn towards every person who's ever been injured because someone was careless or reckless or intentionally tried to do them harm. This is the nobility of being a lawyer. This is what it means to be a lawyer. It's what it means for all of us who sit here who are lawyers, and now it's you. Now it's your turn to turn towards those people as we have, because that is your life's journey. The great poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning said that we can never repay those people who have helped us to become what we become. But rather, what we can do is repay by doing things in kind for others. That's what it means to be a lawyer. That's what it means to take off from this point and begin your legal career. This is what we will be here for you. You can turn towards us because we will not turn away. We will stand beside you and support you in everything that you do. Now, for some of you, you don't want to listen to me ever again, and that's okay. But for others who have never had to deal with me, you can try me out. You never know. Um, but that's what it is, and that's why it's such a privilege to stand here um, and speak to you. Now, you know this would not be Flynn if I didn't do something weird. Because I've always, you know, I, 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 you know how I am. It's what my kids worry about the most, is how random and demented am I going to get. But I was thinking about this, and I was thinking in terms of what is this? Well, you know that I'm obviously in between grading exams, first year Civ Pro exams. I'm watching the heat. And I really want the Heat to win, and I want them to play Golden State, and we'll go on from there. But the idea is, is that I'm not going to get to a Heat game, because I don't get paid enough. But I, I'm not going to get to a Heat game. <laughs> so I've always thought that the most fun would be there to be on a Game 7 clincher, where you know it's over and you're now saying goodbye to the team you just vanquished. Well, in a sense, you are saying goodbye to law school. Now, I don't think you vanquished law school, but at the same time, you're saying goodbye to it. And of course, what's the song that everybody sings when, you're, when you do that? You know what it is. Na, 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 na. You know what I mean, right? So now, you're going to have to get off your butts and you're going to have to do this because that's what we do. Okay? So all of you down here, you're the first group. This guy, these guys right here. Ready? Let me hear it. Na 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 na. That was weak. We got a, we got a little action over here. That's pretty good. All right, now you guys are going to do it, and now the people in the stands are going to join with you. And I expect you guys to do this because obviously you've sat there too long already. So let's sing. Ready? Na, 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 na. Now, what do you think the chances are back here? You guys ready? All right, let's hear it. Na, na, na. Okay, now, no, no, we're not done. Now, everybody do it together one more time. Ready? Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you very much. I think there's the making of the Harlem Shake up here. <laughs>
Thanks, Professor Flynn. Uh, it is now my honor to introduce the 2013 commencement speaker, Mr. Eugene Pettis, President-elect of the Florida Bar. Uh, Mr. Pettis' citation of accomplishments will be read when he is presented with an honorary degree. Uh, I do want to say just a couple things. Um, Professor, uh, uh, Mr. Pettis spoke at the orientation professionalism day for the first year law students this year. Uh, and he mentioned in his presentation that his daughter was starting law school this year at some other law school, which happens to be his alma mater, so that's okay. And he mentioned to me that he had said to the dean that he would come back to that school three years later to be their commencement speaker. And I said, I can do better than that. So will you be our commencement speaker this year? And he graciously accepted. Please welcome Mr. Pettis. Thank you, Dean Steele, President Hanbury, to all the distinguished faculty, Board of Trustees, and most importantly, to the graduating class of 2013. Thank you so much for inviting me to be your commencement speaker today. The other part of the conversation that Dean Steele didn't tell you, I tried to get this commencement moved. They, you know, they do these commencement planning way ahead of time. So when he asked me in the fall, uh, I said, can we move it to June 29th, which would have been the day after I got sworn in as president. And if we could have moved this, I would have had the power to wave all of you past the bar exam. <laughs> but he just wouldn't move it, so I apologize. It's his fault, so, you know, come July, you, you have to take the test. I can feel the excitement in the air. You know, I, it's been 28 years since I graduated from school, and whenever you come around a, a, a graduation, it's, it's excitement. It's a feeling of accomplishment. And you have every reason to have the emotion of accomplishment here this afternoon because you've sacrificed greatly. When your friends were calling you and posting on Facebook asking you to come to happy hour, at Falcon Pub or at TAP 42, you stayed focused and you stayed in the library. Okay, maybe you didn't go that far, but you get the point. This is an opportunity for you to celebrate all that you have sacrificed over the past three years. When I graduated in 1985, there were a few differences in comparison to 2013. I entered the profession, there were 36,000 lawyers we're now just short of 96,000 lawyers. When your class of 2013 gets sworn in in September and October of this year, we'll be upwards of 98,000 lawyers in the state of Florida. When I was sworn in, there was 14% females within the profession of law. Today we have 36% and it's rapidly climbing. And I had to look this up. When I graduated in 1985, the top song was Madonna, Like a Virgin. I don't remember that, but I looked that up. And you know, 2013, we're almost at the halfway point, and a song that you may call upon for this moment, a reflection of first, second, to third year of law, you may borrow one from Drake. Started from the bottom, but now we're here. On a serious note, there is no question that the legal profession is going through evolutionary changes. There are societal forces that are reshaping our profession. In addition to economic realities, information technology is also impacting our profession and the way we practice law and how we interact and communicate with our clients, the courts, and with each other. In 1985, when I graduated, desktop computers were not in play. Cell phones had not been invented. Al Gore had yet to invent the internet. <laughs> in the next few years, we'll have a graduating class from law school that's never known the world without the internet. 
It was John F. Kennedy who once stated, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or to the present are certain to miss the future. Each of you must embrace the fact that change is inevitable and use your creative talents to help shape a new legal model that preserves the core principles of law while advancing a new paradigm. Three years ago, when you commenced this journey of law school, it was in the midst of economic and societal uncertainty. We've referred to it as the Great Recession. But despite the uncertainty, each of you showed a faith a faith that no matter the time or the circumstance, the legal profession would endure. You noted that the legal profession had shined bright over history as a pathway of justice and equality in our society. Lawyers have stood on the front line of some of the most proud moments in our history. 2013 marks the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, the result of fierce battles led by President Abraham Lincoln, a lawyer on the front line. 50 years ago, the United States Supreme Court passed its ruling in Gideon versus Wainwright that indigent criminal defendants had a right to legal representation, lawyers on the front line. And over the past decade, we've watched as the world has seen historical dictatorships fall in Iraq and in Egypt. There have been lawyers serving as the architects of new constitutional democracies, lawyers on the front line. That is our proud heritage of law, and that is the profession that you're about to become a part of. There have been 36 years of Shepherd Broad Law Center graduates that have sat at the moment you're sitting today. Many were here doing years that quietly passed from one to another without much fanfare or concern. Periods where jobs were plentiful and prosperity required little by way of sacrifice or struggle. But the class of 2013 is given a different charge. There's a different calling on each of your lives. Your class will help define the practice of law like few before you have. But you need to recognize this is both a privilege as well as a responsibility. And I have a gut suspicion as you've gone over the past three years, you can feel the change in the wind within the legal profession. And the profession that you're going to come into in September, October, once you're sworn into the bar, will be a different profession than you leave in decades to come. But in the midst of change, there are some guideposts for you to follow. As you pass the bar, and I said, as you pass the bar, because you're going to pass the bar, you're going to take an oath to our profession. And as you take that off, I want you to also take a look at what's called the creed of professionalism. And therein are two points that I always like to highlight in my speeches that I think reflects the ideal lawyer, a lawyer such as Abraham Lincoln or Atticus Finch, both of whom were willing to sacrifice their all for what they knew was right. Lawyers who had the courage the compassion, and the strength of service to others. The first of these provisions state, I revere the law, the judicial system, and the legal profession, and will at all times in my professional and private lives uphold the dignity and the esteem of each. This tenet speaks of an active role that you should play in being an advocate for the law and what is right. Maintaining a fair and impartial judiciary unobstructed by politics. Making sure that all citizens of our society have access to our courts, no matter their financial means. Secondly, 
The second point of the creed states, I will further my profession's devotion to public service and to public good. Build a career on service to others. And I assure you from experience, it will enhance the quality of your profession, it will enhance the quality of your life, and enhance the quality of all of those that are around you. It is doing times such as now, times of renewal, that your generation can refocus us on the values of our profession and the values in which it was founded upon. The principles that stood strong against all that was wrong over our history. That's your call to action. Very shortly, each of you would get a chance to come across this stage. And some of you may consider this an end to something. But in truth, it's just the beginning. It's the beginning of endless possibilities for each of your lives. It's the beginning of choices that will define your future and define the communities within which you will reside. And it's the beginning for you to use your skills to lift someone else, to lift a fellow man. Don't let the size of the bar that I reference, 98,000 once you all are sworn in in the fall, don't let that size be a barrier to your engagement. And in return for what surely will be the most proud line item on your resume, NSU Law, give back your time, your talents, and your treasures to this institution for all the generations that will follow you. It was Arnie Pinkavisi who once stated, graduation is only a concept. In real life, every day you graduate. Graduation is a process that goes on until the last day of your life. And he noted that if you can grasp that, you'll make a difference in this world. I hope that each of you will be defined not by where you come from, but by where you're going, by what you want to achieve, and by the dreams you hope to fulfill. To each of you, I pray that you will be the difference that our profession and this society needs. I have a unique tie to the class of 2013 because on June 28th when I become president, it'll be your class that I will welcome to the profession and I'll be the first president of a long professional career that I'm sure each of you will have. All that I ask is that you commit yourselves to be difference makers and I believe with every being and fiber of my body that together we can make this a better world. Most importantly, I pray that you will enjoy what is certainly going to be an outstanding career. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pettis, for your inspiring comments. Uh, uh, your accomplishments really uh, serve as proof to our graduates that there is life after law school. Uh, President Hanbury, Dean Steele, please join in the conferral of the honorary degree. And the degree reads, Eugene Pettis, you have had a distinguished career in the honorable practice of law, as well as being a well-respected member of the Florida Bar and the Florida community. In 1982, you received a BA in political science from the University of Florida. You then received a JD degree from the University of Florida's Levin College of Law in 1985. In June of 2013, you will be sworn in as president of the Florida Bar and will have the sole distinction of becoming the first African American in the Bar's history to serve in this profession. J. 
Just six years after graduating law school, you were the first African American appointed by Governor Lawton Childs to the South Florida Water Management Dif District's governing board, and you eventually served as its vice chairman. By 1996, you co-founded the firm of Halzer, Pettis, and Schwann, focusing on your practice in the areas of medical malpractice, personal injury, commercial litigation, and employment law. In 2005, you were elected by your peers to the Florida Bar's Board of Governors, where you currently serve on its executive committee and have chaired the Judicial Independence Committee for the past three years. You have continuously supported higher education, serving not only as the University of Florida Foundation Board of Directors for eight years, but also on the Board of Trustees at the University of Florida's Levin College of Law. You have earned the Mandible Hovel's top AV rating for high professional and ethical standards. Throughout your career, you have earned numerous legal awards and accolades, including ongoing selection by your peers for inclusion in the best lawyers in America in areas of medical malpractice and personal injury litigation. Florida Super Lawyers, the South Florida Legal Guide, Top Lawyers List, and Florida Trends Legal Elite. In 2007, you were inducted into the exclusive, invitation-only American College of Trial Lawyers and elected by your peers into the American Board of Trial Advocates, ABATA. In recognition of your commitment to community service, you were recognized in 2012 by the Urban League of Broward County with the Margaret Roach Humanitarian Award. In January 2013, you were recognized by your Abata chapter as the Trial Lawyer of the Year in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Your service to the profession and the community has been acknowledged in receipt of numerous additional honors and awards. Eugene K. Pettis, in acknowledgement of your commitment and contributions to the practice of law, the Board of Trustees of Nova Southeastern University is proud to award you an honorary Doctors of Law degree with all the rights and privileges thereto.